Hey guys, welcome back. It is your favorite Gimp of the Limp, and I'm here with the redo of the next part of the video. I already tried to film this once and it went really bad because my camera's still broken. I made a lot of mistakes. So I just scrapped that video. We're going to redo that whole turn, ripped off everything because I was just, I was messing up. But we're, we're holding the camera with duct tape and prayers right now. So let's cross our fingers that we can get this last one done just so I can have some content up while I wait for this to get repaired. All right. So we left off, Lycans are out, Americans coming in from the left, Soviets are all over here. And if I had known where the Lycans were gonna be, I would have already unloaded my troops. The, the problem is the Soviets did that, so they're, they're in a lot better position. The sequence of play over here is really what I was messing up because I was unloading guys before I was doing the, the, the firing and you're really not supposed to do that because it is initiative draw action cards, which we're not worrying about action cards, rally phase. So if you got anyone who's disrupted or any of that good stuff, then you'll take care of that. Then, then your fire phase, then your movement phase. And that, that really throws me off on this one because I'm used to movement then fire, but in this it's fire then movement. So you've got to think ahead on what you're going to do. And since I wasn't anticipating needing to fire over here, I wasn't really in a position to do it. So I'm going to have to kind of change up what I did. Now I'm going to keep the initiative the same, the Americans had won the initiative. So I'm going to let them go first on this. And the problem is, is that I would want them out, but they can move and fire. That's what that orange symbol means. So if it's blue, it's two column shift penalty. If it's orange, it's a one column shift penalty for firing and moving or moving and firing. So I'm gonna have to move them and fire them, but that means that they don't get to like combine their fire. So the Soviets over here, they can combine fire. These guys, well, this one can't cause he's on a hill, but relatively speaking, the ones that are out, they can combine fire and get those bonuses. I don't think the Americans can do that just because of the, the sequence of play. But here's what we'll do. We'll just, we'll fire more than once. All right, because I, I really want to weaken Num Nuts over here, but I kind of want Hudson to get hurt because there's there's something cool that happens if, if Hudson gets hurt, especially by one of these werewolves uh, for this scenario. Yeah, I might've read ahead a bit, but okay, we're gonna do some firing. I've got the things. Now, if you fire from the inside of an armored vehicle like this, you only get a two bonus, right? So this one's got a firepower uh, two. He would be able to fire at a firepower or a firepower of four with the bonus of troops being inside. But you see their attack power is so much higher than that. They, they could do so much better than that, but they're not going to be able to do that because they're still loaded. So I'm only going to be able to get some stuff going on. Uh, let's think about what we're going to do here. Yeah, after looking at it more, I really wish I had moved these guys further instead because he's got some bonuses. He's got that veteran bonus and that steady bonus. So they get defensive bonuses when they're attacked and when they are attacking, they don't get the penalties for long range. And that's going to apply to all units in the hex. And the range for these guys looks like it's all green range band with the exception of one hero in there that is orange. Now we're at three hexes anyway, so it's not a huge deal, but there are certain bonuses that are going to apply based on that range. So like green, it's normal range up to three, but you can fire up to six with a long range penalty. Thing of it is, no one's gonna be shooting longer than three hexes anyway in this scenario, because it's night. But if it wasn't night, his little steady bonus would mean they could fire up to long range with no penalty. That's good. The one with orange is even better. But if they can do it at close range, then they would get that, uh, that extra little bonus, which they need to get through his powerful stuff, because he has to be hurt, because he regenerates. Let's see. Yeah. I think what we're going to do, oh, look, they got us firepower six. I kind of want to unload everyone. They can't move on fire, so I'm not going to unload them, but these two can move on fire. So what we're going to do is we're going to put them there in a separate hex, and we're going to do that 
because they're going to be uh, moving and firing, okay? But I can't do that until the movement phase. And here's where I'm kind of lost. I think in this, they would have to, they could no, move no more than half their movement value. Uh, unloading there is fine. They can do that, but no, I don't think they can do that since they're loaded. Yeah, I'm just going to have to unload them. That's where I'm, I'm screwing the pooch here because they get half movement point penalty for unloading and then it's a half movement point penalty for, um, for moving and firing. So really they can't move at all if they want to fire. Crap. Okay, yeah, that means I'm only gonna be able to get a couple of shots off. So these guys are going to unload and we're going to unload Recon here because I want to try to make Recon his target instead of Hood and the Humvee. So uh, the Hood's so much better. These, the ones that are moving, they are not going to be able to fire. So they're getting the penalty. And we're just going to take shots from these two. Adam so it's one, two, three, he's within range. So it's gonna be a firepower four and a firepower four, unfortunately, due to the, the circumstances of it being night and only getting a two firepower bonus from people being loaded. Yeah, so if I could unload and fire with these guys, I would, but I don't think I can, so we're just, going ahead and moving them out so I know that they're not going to be counted as part of this fire, but that's handled at a later stage. These guys are actually, one of them's going to get a, a bonus for flanking fire. So fire coming in from the left, fire coming in from the north. And for my own ease of play, I'm gonna handle all the attacks over here and then all the attacks over there since they're just attacking the Lycans. But normally you would go one faction and an impulse around. So like the Americans, then the Soviets, and back to the Americans, and blah, 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 all the way around. Uh, for ease, just for my purposes, I'm going to get these guys done and then those guys done just so I can focus on one side. But if they're attacking each other, I will be going back and forth. Since these guys are adjacent, I want them to get as many bonuses as they can. They'll be able to get an adjacency bonus uh, for short range and flanking fire, which is one column shift. So we're gonna have these guys attack first, that way they're going to get two bonuses or give me the best chance to get some fire going on him. So that's a total of four firepower, even though this guy has a firepower of six because he's only getting to add two to the armored vehicle for firing from inside of it. So four total going at him, range of three, he's in clear. So no modifiers going there, which means I'm going to bump stuff which means that we are going to be looking on the four column, right? So we're gonna roll a D10 and we're gonna see we want a lower roll, lower roll means we get more hits. And then he just compares his morale value rolls against how many hits he takes. All right, so our first shot going out, three, that's actually relatively decent. But it's still probably not gonna to be too much since we're on the four, uh, three hits. His morale value is a four. The Lycans are a four, so they want anything four and under to not get hurt. Oh, he saves two of them. So he's gonna take one damage. And for us, we're keeping track of it here. So he's boom. When he gets there, he will flip. And I really don't want him to flip, kind of, because when he flips, he becomes very much more dangerous. His firepower goes up. So again, we are firing with a firepower four here, but he's getting two bonuses. He's getting short range, right? So short range, one column run shift, and then flanking fire, which is also a column shift. And he's getting that because one shot's already come in from this way. So one come in this way, one come in this way. Basically, you gotta have two coming in at 90 degrees, but only one of them's gonna get that bonus. And that's, for the totality of combat, that's not like a single shot. So uh, to have multiple people fire, they have to be adjacent. 
you know, so like if these units were firing on them, it wouldn't count as like flanking. You have to have two separate combats going on to get a, a flank fire bonus. So let's mark them. They're getting two column shifts from the four. So that actually puts them on eight, which is really good. So let's roll and see what he's going to get. So let's roll. Oh, he got a nine. Oh, he got a nine. No, he's got a nine. Nine is crap. One. One hit. All the bonuses I could get to him. He gets a freaking one, man. What garbage is that? Shiznit. All right. Uh, so just a single D6 or a D8, D10, whatever dice that I'm freaking rolling here. And he doesn't save it, so he does take another hit. Um, where was he? Yep. So that will actually flip his counter, which for us is bad because as you can see, his combat value goes up. He's a 12 normally, and then he gets pissed and he goes to 18. Not good, not good at all. I would have hoped for more hurt to have gone down range on him. I got a feeling he's just gonna lay waste because they're going to move after I'm done. Now I get to do my movement phase after this. I will still have half movement value for these guys. Like I said, I just moved them out so I'd remember that I'm not including them in the fire phase. They're going to be moving up to half their movement value. These guys have fired, so they won't. So let's check the Soviets real quick. Uh, Soviets got a couple of things going on. We've got one here. These lichens got uh, infantry they had unloaded, so it's good stuff. This one has, what is that, a firepower of six. So if he does six and has him join in because he's adjacent, that gives him a two column shift bonus, which will put him on the 10 column. 10 column is pretty damn good. Or he could have two six power shots going at him. This one gets a short range bonus, which will be better. Which would be better? They're out in the open. They're going to move, and more than likely, they are going to get stuck in into close uh, assaults here in a sec. They're either going to move against these guys or over in this direction towards the building. I don't know. Both, both attacks are pretty good. All right, we're going to try this. I don't know. I don't know. Because both are good. So a six, range, a six power attack or a close range attack, that would be eight firepower. So eight column and six column or two column shifts over, which would be up to the 12 column. So I can have one really powerful attack or two okay-ish attacks. I'll tell you what, since these guys regenerate, I think it's going to be better to split my fire, especially since they have that defensive bonus, which means they are going to ignore the first hit that they take automatically. So he's going to fire. He is going to be on the eight column. Let's see what eight column can do. Ooh, eight column is pretty good. That is three hits coming out at him right there. All right. All right. We'll take that. Or no, that is um, five hits coming at him. Right there, boom, five hits. So he rolls five times. He's looking for fours or under to survive this attack. All right, so let's roll four. Oh, what did he say? It was one, two, three, he takes two hits. So he's going to be reduced and disrupted. So he's gonna flip and be disrupted. So that's not too bad. They are doing pretty good there. Wait, 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 he ignores one. So he's just going to take the disruption. Damn, 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 that sucks. Okay, uh, one more attack coming in. See, that's the thing. That's why I kind of thought I'd be better off splitting up the fire since they do ignore the first hit. So he's on the sixth column. Rolling for his second attack for the infantry there. All right, so here we go. Rolling for it. What is that? Six, six, is that six or nine? Six, six is two hits. So that's one hit, one hit, because he's ignoring one of them. Damn. 
All right, so he's looking for four under, four under. Yep, he got the four under, so that's gonna stay. And when does their regeneration take place? I think that takes place in the, the rally phase. So he's gonna stay disrupted, which means he's not gonna move into their hex. He might end up moving around and over there. So him getting disrupted is good stuff because it keeps those guys from dying. We are just going to conduct one fire over here. Try to slow these guys down. I don't know how well it will do. They are firing on the sixth column at their max range of three hexes, and they are targeting guys in the woods, which means they are getting a two column shift uh, deficit going on. So it's not too good for them. And that's a three, but a three on what? Three on a two. That's two hits and they're ignoring one. Uh, so they're not getting much on this. So, so they just need the one morale to save them. And yeah, they got it. Damn, that is brutal. That is brutal. All right, so that's fire phase complete. Everyone who could fire did fire. These guys have line of sight blocked. He's up on top of a hill, so he can't shoot. Those guys fire uh, to movement phase. And again, we would go back and forth, but I'm going to do one side and then the other. These guys had unloaded. That's why I marked them as moved. They're not going to be moving. So they have half movement points, which means they've got one. Basically, they can do. And I want them to go here. I want to get his attention have him attack them. Yes, it will be bad. More than likely, Tiny's going to die, but Hudson won't, because there's a little, a little trick coming. Um, damn it. I don't think these guys exert a zone of control. The Lycans, I, since they only do their attack in their hex, so I think this guy can move. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I'm going to move there so he's staying anyway to a defensive hex yeah yeah that's what we're gonna do so he's moved to there he's moved and my hope is gunther here ganari whatever his name is is going to go this direction because i want him to attack hudson i do not want him to kill especially my humvee i really don't care if he kills the recon guys though all right, <clears throat> for the Soviets, I don't think I'm going to, I want to keep him there for now as defensive. I want to keep these guys there for defensive. So they're going to stay and the rest of them fired, which means now we're just on the Lycans and where they're going to move and they get rolled for. All right, and since the Lycans are kind of like a, a third party wishy-washy thing, the, there's really no way they can move as far as not moving towards an enemy and completing their objectives. So as far as disrupted, I'm going to leave the disrupteds and count them as like being hit, being hurt, all that good stuff. But I'm still going to just let them move in to attack and do it that way. I'll treat the Americans and the Soviets as normal, but I'm making a, a judgment call on that because I don't want them uh, getting disrupted, moving away, regenerating, coming back, getting disrupted, moving away and it, it kind of dragging the game out. So we're just gonna let him get stuck in. All right, so first we're gonna roll for Ganari here. And it's one through five, he's going to move towards the closest enemy combatant. Six, he's going to go towards one of these two places, be this one since it's the closest. So let's roll for him and see where he's going. All right, so he's gonna go towards the closest combatant. Here's what we're gonna do, one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If I get a 10, we'll re-roll it and uh, see which way he goes. Hoping for a one, two, three, because again, something special happens, but I can live with one, two, three, or seven, eight, nine. I just don't want a four, five, six, because I really don't want him to tear that hex up. All right, so let's roll for him. See what we're going to get. Three, get, get you mother fudger. Yes, perfect. Yes. Okay, he's, he's going to kill my guys, and I'm happy about it. I know you guys are like, what the hell are you doing? You will see. You will see. All right, for numbnuts over here, we got to roll. Where's he going? And it really doesn't matter. 
whichever way he goes, he's he's attacking something. So he's either going to be attacking these guys or he's going to be attacking those guys. So let's roll four. He got a one. So he's going to go towards the closest enemy, which means he's going to go here and attack. And again, normally this wouldn't happen. I'm just allowing the disrupted just so I, again, don't get into a chain of lichens running back and forth as they get disrupted and regenerate, disrupted, regenerate. It'd be a whole thing. At least this way they can either die or kill shit. Same thing with dummy here. And again, pretty much either way he goes, because I don't want to send him that way and leave this one down there, having it being too easy. So he's probably going this way no matter what. Three, so I go towards the closest enemy, which again, the closest enemy is this one and this one, since they're both um, three hexes away. But he has two enemies down here that are three hexes away, so thematically it's gonna work. But again, like I said, I'd wanna kind of spread the, the lichen pain out instead of focus firing, because then the, uh, the Soviets up here just get raffle stomped. So he will go this direction. And that's going to be one, two, three, four. Go that way. So at least he's not going to get tag team fired by that BTR. Because if I move him there, that's that's just stupid. He'll get shot all to pieces. This way, it gives him the best chance of coming in here, getting those Soviets. Okay, so when it comes to close assault, there is one special rule when it comes to the Lycans. The first time they attack the side that, uh, or anyone that is being close assault by the lichens has to take a morale check. And if they fail, they become disrupted. Well, sorry, bumping my, my camera stand there. So both of these sets are going to have to do a morale check real quick. It's going to be four under for the Americans and three or under for the Soviets. Do the Americans first and they fail. And now we will do the Soviets. And they pass. I'll be damned. Okay, we will grab this and put that there because they are now disrupted. Now, what we do is we compare the total close assault values, all right, and get a ratio. So this total for these guys is, was it, 12. So 12 for them. And wait, he's got a knife. I think that might give him a bonus. Think that might give him a bonus. Let me check the rules on that. Yes, that would give him a bonus in close assault, but only if this one is disrupted. And he is not. He probably should be disrupted, but I missed that. And I took it as health damage to put him there. So we'll just leave it because it puts him as very powerful anyway. So he's 18 to 12. What is that? Uh, that's three to one? No, three to two. Yeah, that's a three to two. Uh, as far as combat ratio goes, and they are disrupted. So you're going to figure out your ratio and then look at this chart and you're going to roll based on it, all right? And then the numbers in here is the amount of hits each side is going to take, attackers and defenders. Uh, yeah, attackers losses and then defenders losses. So for us, we are at a three to two, which doesn't look like it's applicable. So should be two to one is the next step down on it. Defend, ooh, disrupted units defend with one half their close assault factor, fractions rounded down. So they are actually not 12, they're six. So that actually does come out three to one. So they are on this column, all right, for taking the, the attack against them. Make sure I'm getting everything else. It's on this. He's got some type of special ability. Let's look what that is real quick. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything that matches that star on the right. So screw it. We'll ignore it. Uh, he's attacking at three, two, one. We'll roll a D10 and we'll see what we're going to get. And again, the die roll is better for the attacker when it's low, all right? So if he rolled a zero, for example, he would take zero hits, whereas the defenders would take nine. And then again, if they roll a nine, then he's taking five hits where they take three. So the Americans are not getting out of this without taking some hurt. All right, so let's roll for him, see what he gets. 
Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, okay. He's done. Tiny, you just died. <laughs> but Hudson is not going to die because he can't die in this scenario. He has something special that comes in. So that'll actually probably be picked up on the next video. We do have to see if they save for all of these because they're already disrupted, which means technically they got four points left because they can be reduced and then eliminated. So what are we doing? We got nine that we got to do. Uh, so yeah, we'll do five. No, what is it, six? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do six and then another three and see what they get. All right, so that's one, two, three, four. Okay, so that's two that are failed. Damn, they actually did pretty good. So that's two hits. We'll mark that. So remember, they've got two hits they've got to account for. Tiny, you might live because I'm gonna let Hudson eat all that. Uh, was that another three they gotta try to save for? And uh, I gotta do it. Sorry, buddy. That's one failed. And they passed another two, so they took a total of three while already disrupted, which means, how do I do this? All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Like I said, we're gonna be picking this up on the next video because there's too much that's going on, but when we start in the next video, Hudson's girlfriend is coming running in, and this is Katrina, and she's a straight beast. She's got a lot of special abilities. She's his uh, little vampire love interest. So she is going to be coming in from here, but I do have three hits that I have to account for. And since Hudson can't be killed, I'm gonna give him two of those and I'm gonna give Tiny one, which will reduce Tiny and reduce Hudson, but Hudson can't be killed. So I'm kind of gaming the system a little bit there. Sorry guys, <laughs> is what it is and leave them as disrupted and they are going to have to retreat a uh, hex. So they will end up there, torn all up from that horrible, horrible lichen tech, but immediately she's gonna come running in, right? So this is handled before we even go to the next turn. She's gonna come running in and she's gonna try to put the heart lock on Gidnari for beating up on her, uh, her male side piece there. We will get that on the next turn, but we get to handle this right now. All right, so what I've done is I've grabbed up the the deck here and we're gonna draw the top. Remember, we got roughly a 40% chance that this attack can go through because it is against an armored fighting vehicle. If it is not uh, not accurate, then, or it doesn't show that on there, then it'll get discarded and they will not be able to attack the armored fighting vehicle this round. And this is Ferocity is what I'm looking for, I believe. Yep, reducing, eliminating AFVs. So this first one was successful. They can attack them in close assault. So they've got a firepower or a close assault factor of four against their 16. There, so that's four to one on the chart. Let's set this over here. So four to one. And the Lycans are ignoring the first hit. That's gonna be brutal. That's gonna be brutal. All right, let's see what they get. Eight, that's gonna be nothing. That's gonna be nothing. Uh, okay, three to five. So that AFV is having to save for five hits and the Lycans are having to save for two because they are reducing one of them or getting rid of one of them. All right, so let's roll for the Lycans real quick. And they pass both. Oh, damn, damn. That's that's brutal. That is brutal. Uh, let's do five. And it's three or under is what the Soviets are looking for. Uh, they fail three. That AFE is just eliminated. It's just straight out done. And we'll grab ourselves a wreck marker here to throw in it. So we've got ourselves a nice little wreck and some lichens left who are still disrupted, but they are going to heal that at the end of the turn. All right, so 
So there is a lot going on with Katrina. I know she's going to run in. She's got nine movement points that she gets to enter with. Not normally, but she does get to enter at nine movement points. Basically, bitch is pissed and she's running in to save her little side piece. And she is going to be attacking Gunnari. We will pick up on the next video with her slamming him and see how well she can hurt him. But yeah, I did game the system a little bit because I wanted her in here. And here's the thing. She can be controlled by the Americans with the exception of she'll attack other Americans unless she's stacked with Mike. So she has to be stacked with Mike for him to you know keep her under control. Otherwise, she's just going to lay waste to the good guys as well. So uh, after she gets done attacking Gennari, Mike has got to rally, give her that disruption and get back in there so he can gain control of her before she tears loose and kills all these guys. So it's kind of a... Uh, a dangerous glass cannon bringing her into the game. But here's where we finished off. The Lycans are doing pretty good. Uh, they're going to heal back from the disruption. This one has torn up the Americans, but the Americans got their special girl coming in to save them. And we've got one down here that is going to potentially lay waste to these guys unless they can get some concentrated fire going. Uh, but that's going to be hard since they're in these the woods here. So not a whole lot that this BTR can do right now unless it moves in. And if it moves in, it can be torn up by the lichens just like this one just did. A lot of special rules, a lot of moving pieces when it comes to this game, but definitely a fun one. I gotta say, I love stuff. The vampires, werewolves, all that good stuff. Hell yeah, I'll play this all day long. All right, but you guys stay tuned. I will be back with the next video. Uh, I can only see half of what I've recorded, but I hope I got all of it because the... The screen on my camera is just is it's gone <laughs> at this point. All right. You guys take care. I will catch you in the next one.